In this video, we're going to look at stop orders. A stop order is a market order with a stop price. And this stop price determines when the market order is dispatched to the order book. Like limit orders, stop orders have two parameters that affect their behavior. Limit orders have the side of the order and the limit price location on the book. Stop orders have the side of the order and the stop price location on the book. Like we saw with limit orders in our previous video, we still have four permutations when dealing with stop orders. The difference is that stop orders have a stop price instead of a limit price. It's important to note that stop orders can have a limit price as well, but when stop orders have a limit price, we call these order types stop limit orders. Similarly, when we are talking about stop orders without a limit price, we could say stop market order, but stop market orders are usually just referred to as stop orders. We don't say market. We just drop the market and we call it a stop order. A stop order is just a market order with a stop price. A stop limit order is just a limit order with a stop price. Stop orders can be thought of as delayed market orders. Stop limit orders can be thought of as delayed limit orders. This so-called delay is the delay in time until the stop order is triggered. When a stop order is triggered, a market order is dispatched to the order book. When a stop limit order is triggered, a limit order is dispatched to the order book. For this reason, it really helps to have a solid understanding of both market orders and limit orders. So be sure to watch the videos that cover those order types and their configuration permutations before moving forward with stop orders. In this section, we're going to be focusing on stop orders, and in the next section, we will look at stop limit orders. Before we dive into the details, let's think about what we already know and use this knowledge to build up to where we are about to go. I want you to notice how the different order types we have been discussing build on one another. As we add parameters, we gain flexibility and control over the execution of our orders. Market orders only have an order side. This order side parameter provides us with the ability to buy and sell at the best currently available prices in the market. For this reason, the order is called a market order. A limit order is just a market order with a limit price. And a stop order is a market order with a stop price. And a stop limit order is a limit order with a stop price. As we add parameters, we add control and we create new order types. To upgrade a market order to a stop order, we give the order a stop price. As previously mentioned, when a market order has a stop price, we call the order a stop order. This upgrade gives the market order the ability to be delayed. One prominent question at this point is, why would we want to delay our orders? The answer to this question has to do with two types of processes, manual and automatic. When we are trading, there are many factors and conditions that affect our buy and sell decisions. Perhaps the most prominent factor or condition is the price. We have a few options when we are evaluating price. We can trade at the currently best available price, at a future higher price, or at a future lower price. If we are trading at the present time, at the current best price, we can use a market order for this. However, if we want to trade at a future price, either higher or lower, we must monitor the price change over time. With a market order, our only option is to monitor the price manually. However, with a stop order, we can delay our market order until the price conditions are met, and the stop price is used for this. A sell side stop order is triggered when the last trade price is less than or equal to the stop price. This allows us to create a sell order now and automatically delay its execution to a future time when our lower price condition is met. A buy side stop order is triggered when the last trade price is greater than or equal to the stop price. This allows us to create our buy order now and automatically delay its execution to a future time when our higher price condition is met. We could also achieve this delay functionality using plain market orders, but the process would be manual. When using stop orders, the process becomes 
automatic. Stop orders are a particular type of conditional order. Conditional orders allow us to make our order execution based on some condition being true. With general conditional orders, the conditions can get as complicated as we like. But with stop orders, price is our only condition. We are now ready to jump to GDAX and have a look at these stop order permutations in action. We have four to deal with, the buy buy, the buy sell, the sell sell, and the sell buy. So let's do it. Let's begin by looking at the sell buy permutation. This is a sell side stop order with a stop price on the buy side of the order book. Since the stop price is on the buy side of the order book, this permutation is allowing us to place a sell side market order now that will be delayed and will execute at a future lower price automatically. For sell side stop orders, the last trade price has to be less than or equal to our stop price for the order to be triggered. When the stop order is triggered, a sell side market order will be submitted. And as we saw in the market orders video, sell side market orders execute at the highest bid. For another comparison, we also saw in the video on limit orders as takers that a sell buy limit order will execute at the highest bid. So sell side market orders and sell side limit orders as takers both execute at the highest bid. Now our sell side stop order will also execute at the highest bid but this is going to be a future highest bid, whatever the highest bid is at the time that our stop order is triggered. So not the current best bid, but a future best bid. Before we continue with this discussion, let's go ahead and place this sell by stop order. Over here in the order form section, our order type is stop. We are on the sell side. We are seeking to sell 0.01 Litecoin. And for our stop price, we have 260 which is on the buy side of the order book. So overall, we have a sell side stop order with a stop price that is on the buy side of the order book. Let's go ahead and place this order. And we have a warning. This order may feel at a price less favorable than the stop price. Are you sure you would like to continue? Let's click place order and then talk about the meaning behind this warning. In the open order section, we can see that we have one stop order open. There is a red badge that says stop at 260. I want you to notice the value in the price column. The value MKT means market. This value indicates that the price for this order will be the market price at the time the stop order is triggered. This is because a market order will be submitted when the stop order is triggered. To have any clue as to what fill price we will get for this order, we must understand what the state of the order book will be in the future when the stop order is triggered. To understand what the order book will look like in the future, let's first consider what we need to happen for this sell side stop order to be triggered. We need the last trade price to be less than or equal to our stop price of 260. We need all of the bids above 260 to be taken off the book. This happens when sell side takers match with those particular bids. All right, that's step one. This puts us at a future point in time. So currently all of those bids are on the book, but we're thinking ahead to a future point in time when takers have taken those bids off of the book. At this future point in time, our stop price of 260 is currently the best bid. Now we need a trade to occur at 260. A sell side taker order must enter the marketplace wishing to take from the order book at 260. When this occurs, we will see a downtick in red in the trade history. And at this very moment, our sell side stop order will be triggered, producing a sell side market order to be dispatched to the order book. As long as the best bid stays at 260, our order will fill at 260. This brings us back to the warning we got when we submitted this order. This order may fill at a price less favorable than the stop price. The question at this point is, how and why can this happen? The reason this can happen is because there are many participants in the marketplace and the market can move very quickly. Let's think back to the point in time when our stock price was the highest bid. All we need from this point is for the next taker to be a seller. This will create the downtick trade at our stock price, which will trigger our stop order. Now let's suppose this downtick trade is a very large sell order and is unable to be completely filled at the best bid. This sell side taker could be a single huge sell order 
or many sell orders. In particular, this is likely to be the case in a large sell-off. Imagine a large number of sell-side taker orders hitting the market all at once. This is what happens during sell-offs. In this scenario, the price will be pushed down. This is because the taker orders must keep moving to the next highest bid to get a fill. As this occurs, the price will slip lower, and this will continue until all of the taker orders are completely filled. When this process begins, our sell side market order must come into the marketplace behind the sell side takers that triggered our stop. Since the highest bidding price has been pushed down by these sellers, our order will fill at a lower price than our stop price. This type of cascading lower price is common in markets that are experiencing a sell-off. And this is why we were warned when submitting our stop order. The ultimate fill price for our market order that is dispatched when the stop order is triggered is an unknown variable. We know that our order will execute at the highest bidding price, but we don't know what this bidding price will be at the time our order is submitted. This is why the warning is telling us our fill price can be lower than our stop price. This is also the case for regular market orders, but unlike stop orders, we can actually see what is happening in the marketplace at the time we submit our order. With stop orders, the conditions in the marketplace are unknown to us since the order will be delayed until some future point in time. Now, in many cases, and especially in a market that is trending down slowly, it is likely that we will execute just below our stop price. This is probably what you'll see most often if you test this out for yourself. However, we have to be aware of what can go wrong. This thought experiment was really the harder part of this conversation, but I want to discuss something more simplistic at the moment. In the video on limit orders as makers, we saw that the market size would rise at our limit price when our order was posted to the book. There are a couple of reasons this does not happen with stop orders. One reason is that stop orders are delayed market orders. The delay means that the order has not been dispatched to the book. After submitting the order, it is stopped and sent to the book only after being triggered. Before we discuss the next reason, I want you to remember what happens to a sell side limit order on the buy side of the order book. We saw in the video on limit orders as takers that sell buy limit orders execute at the highest bidding price. This happens because a sell side order is an ask and an ask cannot join the buy side of the order book. This is because asks match with bids rather than join with them. In our example here, our stop order also represents an ask. The only reason our order doesn't execute immediately, like the market order and the limit order as a taker, is because it is delayed. Our order is stopped just before being sent to the order book and is waiting for the trigger before it is actually dispatched to the book. Let's look now at the sell sell permutation for stop orders. This permutation gives us a sell side stop order with a stop price that is on the sell side of the order book. For sell side stop orders, we know that the last trade price has to be less than or equal to our stop price for the order to be triggered. Since we are dealing with the sell sell permutation, after our stop order is submitted, the trigger condition for our order will be true as soon as the next trade occurs. This means that our stop order will only stop for a brief moment before it is triggered. Depending on how fast trades are occurring, we may not even see our stop order pop up in the open order section before the order is actually triggered and a sell side market order is dispatched to the order book. Given this behavior, we can say that sell sell stop orders reduce to sell side market orders almost immediately. This gives us a strong hint that we have encountered our first order configuration that is not practical. After all, why would we go through the trouble of giving a sell side market order a stop price and calling it a sell side stop order if the delay that we are seeking would amount to nothing? The answer is we wouldn't do this. We would simply use a sell side market order. Let's go ahead and execute this order. We will choose 280 on the sell side of the order book for our stop price. When we place this order, we may see it in the open order section for a brief moment, and as soon as the next trade occurs, we will see the market order execute. Note that the next trade can be a down tick or an up tick. This is because both prices, the lowest ask and the highest bid, 
are below our stock price. When our sell side market order is dispatched to the order book, the order will take or hit the highest bidding price. After the stop order is triggered, the execution behavior that we will see will be just what we saw in the market orders video. Let's go ahead and place this order and we see the same warning as before. We'll go ahead and verify and click place And now we have sold our Litecoin. If we look in the fills section, we can see that we were charged a fee. This is because we ultimately submitted a market order and market orders are takers. Like we've previously discussed, stop orders ultimately are market orders with an added delay feature. This is why we were charged a fee. Before we wrap up with this video, I want to replay the trade execution. And this time, I want you to focus on the trade size on the order book at the highest bid. We need to look at it before and after the trade. I also want you to pay close attention to the two trades in the trade history. The first one is the trade that triggered our stop. And the second with the size of 0.01 Litecoin is our sell side market order that followed. Let's replay the trade execution now. Now that the trade is complete, we can see how the starting size of 45 and some change was updated after being hit by the two taker trades. What I want to point out here relates to the conversation that we had about the warning before placing the trade. The trade here that triggered our stop had a size of 4.48. Since the size on the order book at the highest bid was greater than 4.48, there was still demand available at that best bid for our order to take. However, if this order would have been larger it could push the price down and as you can see here our order comes in after this particular order we are behind in line so to speak so i just wanted to point that out based on the discussion we had before when it comes to executing orders our order is going to come in behind the actual order that triggers our stop so we have to be aware that if this is a large order then we could be executing it at a lower price than whatever the current highest bid is at the time our order is triggered we are now ready to flip to our spreadsheet and fill in these details. We have just seen the sell by and sell sell permutations for stop orders. For both of these configurations, we know that they are takers. This is because stop orders are just delayed market orders and market orders as we have seen are takers. So when we start out with a stop order, we end up with a market order, which is a taker. Additionally, we saw this with the execution of the sell sell permutation in action. Speaking of the sell sell permutation, we saw that this configuration reduced immediately to a sell side market order. For this reason, we would never choose to use this order configuration. After all, the stop price is supposed to give us the ability to delay our order. Since this is not the case for the sell sell stop order permutation, we would just opt to use a sell side market order if we didn't care to have the delay. For this reason, the sell sell permutation is not practical. We would never use it. Now, the sell buy permutation, on the other hand, is practical. We would use it if we wanted our market order to be delayed until some future epoch. 